more area of policy in which the Green Party has a huge contribution to make. And I do want to thank Wendy particularly, I think, for that email because it really just does bring to home how bad this baseline testing is. I'm very proud that the Green Party has been opposing that and will continue to oppose that. And we'll work with all the teachers' campaigns we can to fight that. You know, we have to defeat that because it's just at the start of a whole succession of the whole, as the NUT describes it, the exam factory culture. And one of the things I find that when I go and speak in um, colleges and universities, and obviously our free university tuition fees policy is extremely popular, but actually when I talk to groups of young people, when I say we have to stop our schools being exam factories, where you shove through exam after exam after exam, that usually gets a louder round of applause than zero tuition fees, which I think is enormously telling of just how much people feel like they've been put under so much pressure. And I think we've already heard um, quite a bit about the whole issues of mental health, but a figure that I heard that just absolutely horrified me is the rate of depression of the under 16s has doubled in the last 10 years. That's 10 years, a doubling of the rate of depression. And what we're doing to people, and of course we know what's happened to child mental health services at the same time, you know, it just really doesn't bear thinking about. Um, perhaps on a slightly more cheerful note, we all know what being labelled the blob is like. Indeed, I don't know if you have any people, but yes, we're the, green, we're the green blob, because Owen Patterson was actually on, I think it was, it was yesterday or the day morning before, was back on the uh, BBC Radio 4 Today programme, complaining about the green blob. So, you know, I think we really need to adopt blob uh, as a great phrase of, yes, we're the blobs. <laughs> but I think a couple of reflections back on, on the last government before we get to the current one. Um, to me, one of the most telling things was Liz Truss when she was Education Minister. She complained very bitterly that nurseries weren't doing enough to prepare their pupils for jobs. <laughs> Excuse me? Um, and the other one was always, you know, I had lots of encounters with Micah Gove. It's a really fun job being leader of the Green Party. But, you know, Michael Gove, who wanted to inflict his idea of what school, what the, the actual curriculum, the detail of the curriculum down to the history subjects should have been. Now I was, you know, my qualifications in a way for talking about education aren't that broad. I'm a school governor, I've been a school governor for about five years. And like everybody, I was of course a pupil myself. And when I was a pupil, when I go back to where I was about 11, before the love of learning was beaten out of me, which I had to relearn about a decade later. But when I was 11 and still had that love of learning, I was really into lungfish. I thought lungfish were absolutely fascinating. The, the whole transition, the evolution from water to air. And, um, but I've always said that I promise if I'm ever in charge of education, I will not make everyone learn about lung <laughs> But I think dialogue is always more interesting than monologue, so I won't talk for too long, but just a few things to run through perhaps about Green Party policy that for perhaps some people in the room don't know, perhaps to remind ourselves of. I think one of the things that we haven't perhaps talked about much yet that Caroline Lucas has done a great deal of work on is personal, social, health and economic education. <laughs> and this is something that I'm particularly passionate about as an old feminist. Sex and relationship education, fully inclusive sex and relationship education is hugely important and everything that young people tell me indicates they're not getting good sex and relationship education. But it's much broader than that, and I think it really comes into this broad curriculum issue, that one of the things, there's a couple of countries in the world where everybody is taught first aid at school as a matter of course. And if you think about it, many of us at some point in our lives will find ourselves in a situation where that could be the most important thing you could possibly know, and you will desperately dread, you know, hate the fact this moment you don't know what to do because no one ever taught you that. Things like cooking, even growing your own food, the basics, what I call education for life, and we're utterly failing our kids with that. In terms of Wendy, actually both Wendy and Christine mentioned school starting age. It is Green Party policy that we want to see formal education starting at least one year later. That, like so many of our policies, is very much based 
on the evidence. Um, I think you always have to be careful, and this is a tip for many people in this room, I hope will be future Green Party candidates in various levels. Do say formal education and make sure you're ensuring that there is provision for younger, because the reality is, I've had lots of parents go, but how would I survive financially if there was another year when they weren't at school? Yes, no. So you've really got to make that point in the current reality of our economic circumstances. Um, free schools and academies. I think it's really worth looking at the underlying principle behind free schools and academies. And the foundation of this is the idea of competition between schools. That schools are competing against each other. Now if you do that maybe with widget factories, and maybe one widget factory loses out and has to close down, well that's unfortunate for the workers in that widget factory, but hopefully they'll go and get a job in the more successful one. But what happens when it's a school? And we're seeing this. Schools are losing out in competition and they're having to close down. Now we have a hugely age-based education system and the kids don't go back and have another chance to go back and go through the years when things were all in turmoil and teachers were leaving and the school was closing and they didn't know where they were going next year. That competition is profoundly the wrong basis for our arrangements for schools. We need a cooperative system where schools cooperate, work with each other, get the best possible result for all the kids in their area. Now, I was actually just this morning on Radio 4 talking about how proud I was of the achievements of Brighton and Hove Green Council. Now, I got cut off before I got to the end of the list, but one of the things that I would have said had I had time was that we significantly improved the GCSE and the A-level results in Brighton and Hove. And that was founded on working to get the schools cooperating with each other for the best results for every kid, rather than competing against each other and seeing if there was a way if they were, okay, could shove that child who was never going to reach that level, shove them off to some other school. That's, I think, you know, the whole argument against free schools and academies. <laughs> I think just one final reflection before I finish. And we're focusing here on education, but we do also need to understand the pressures that are coming down on education from, from the sort of world our young people are going out into. The government's so-called living wage, we now have to talk about the real living wage, which is what the Green Party wants, but the government's so-called living wage won't apply to the under-25s. Are they going to get discounts in the supermarket? Discounts on their rent? Discounts Young people know that there's huge pressure on them to get the school results because that's going to be necessary to get the job so that they can actually just pay enough to survive. There's huge pressures out there. We're putting young people out into a really rough world and that pressure is just coming right down through the system. We've got to tackle the pressure in schools, change the way we're doing things in schools. But this is also a whole society problem. We've got to change the way everything works. It's the old Green Party problem. All the policies are all linked up together. <laughs> Thank you.